Okay, so now is there sound? Checking, checking. Okay, something happened. Don't know. All of a sudden, everything just sort of stopped working. So we're going to start over so much for starting early. <laughs> I guess it's a good thing we're starting early. So uh, so today, we'll start all over again. It is Step-by-Step -step Surprise Pinch. It's Wednesday, March 31st. This is part two. So if you missed part one, it was last week. All the videos are available on the QTalk Facebook page and on YouTube. For everybody who's just joining us, the step-by-step -step surprise projects are exactly that. They are um, surprise projects that I show you step-by-step -step before it is revealed. If you want all the details and the instruction on the, um, the surprise projects, you need to buy the kit. Aside from that, you'll just have to guess what we're doing. That's the deal. Anyway, so let's just move forward and um, talk about what we need to do today. So as this is, pro I, this is step two, let's go over all the tools that you need for today. Of course, you're going to need a um, soldering setup because we're going to finally solder it together. Last week, we just made little components, and this week, we're putting them together. You're going to need a, um, you're going to need a curved burnisher because we're going to set the stone a pair of side cutters, some pliers, multi-looping pliers or round pliers will work too, round nose pliers, um, and some patina of some sort. So I've got liver sulfur today and you can also use black max if you prefer. Um, some sort of a dowel rod. I'm going to use the end of my, um, my needle file because it's really small. So it's about an eighth of an inch quarter of an inch somewhere in there is what you're going to need depending on how you want to approach this and a pair of tweezers because we love them and this week I'm going to show you how to use these scratch brushes they're my new favorite tool aside from the tweezers of course because we love the tweezers <laughs> anyway so you have your stone there and it's funny because somebody contacted me and asked me you know the stone has a has a hole in it so I'm going to go do a stone without a hole like no 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 you need the stone with the hole in it and it's not just a bead but it's basically a pendant right so if you haven't guessed yet on um what this is is i'm gonna give another 10 minutes before i tell you what it is but we're pretty close all right so last week what you should have done let's go ahead and zoom in so you can see here so last week what you should have done is you should have made these curves okay i've already set mine up you should have made this dog bone shape out of the silver that you have. I'm working on copper because I already made one. Anyway, and you should have made some other extra components. Here's all my bezel that I made last week that didn't fit. But anyway, so you should have made some extra components, um, some granules, and here's the other curves for the other side. Up to you how many granules you make. Remember, the more granules you add to the project, the harder this gets. Just saying. You should have made a bezel cup for your stone. And the one thing I forgot last week was you need another ring to embellish on the outside of the, uh, the bezel. So you're going to take the remainder of the bead wire that came with the kit. And we're just going to use our multi-looping pliers and just bend it around the second to largest one. That was pretty adequate for me. We're just going to bend it around like so. And we're going to make it fit around the bezel. Just like that. And I know that this is a little long. I'm going to go ahead and trim it. I always use my uh, flush cutters because it just makes life so much easier and there's a lot less um, filing. Okay, let's see. I, I think it's a little big. I don't know. Take a look. Oh, it's not bad. Just a hair. Hold on a second, I'm losing my earpiece. For those of you who've not joined us before, Andy is always in my ear telling me what your questions are. So if you have any questions, do reach out and um, post them. He just tells me what they are because I don't read all your comments out there. Okay, let's see. So here, I'm gonna do a tiny little bit of a trim. It's a hair large for me okay up to you whether or not you want to solder this together or not I think we're doing pretty good I'm gonna skip if you do solder that ring together you do want to make sure that you're using um, hard solder and you can solder that I'm just gonna flatten this out because I think this fits 
just fine. So you can see it goes all the way around. And I'm going to flatten it out so it's flush for when I'm soldering it down to my back plate. Okay. So we'll pull out our leather mallet and the bench block. Just like that. I don't know what is up with this earpiece today. It just does not want to come in. All right, stay in. <laughs> there we go. Cool. All right, so now you have an embellishment around that bezel. Um, now you don't have to do this. This is just an additional embellishment. Just remember the more you add on, the more complicated the soldering and all that gets and the more chances you can melt it. All right. Let's put the pieces together. There's two approaches to this today, the hard way and the easy way. You already know which one I'm gonna do. The hard way, of course. So basically you have these arcs that you created last week. You can put it to the outside of your dog bone shape or you can put it on top of that back plate. It doesn't matter. If you are looking really closely onto this piece here, we'll zoom in so you can actually see that, you can see that there is a little tiny bit of air in between the um, base plate and the embellishment. It just adds a little bit more texture and a little bit more dimension to the piece. And I don't know, I just thought it made it a little bit more interesting. So I, that's what I'm going with, right? So here what you'll do is you'll put solder on the ends and to make sure that it makes contact to your base plate and keep building it up that way. And we're using hard solder. If you were putting it on top, same thing. No change on that, you're gonna use hard solder on that also. So we'll go ahead and move over here and we'll add the other pieces. Now notice I'm not putting solder on that first piece, I'm just gonna put solder on the two side pieces because you don't need that much solder, right? And this is also a choice whether you want to put the embellishments on first and then um, the, the bezel or the other way around. Either way, it's the same, okay? If you want to put the bezel on first, I would use hard solder and then these would go on with some medium solder or vice versa, right? Also, it is up to you whether you want to solder the um, whether you want to solder the granules on now or in the second round of soldering. All right. Just make sure that your bead wire makes contact with makes contact with the base plate. That's most important. Okay. And even though I didn't put solder on the end of this arc it's fine because um, there's enough solder on the other ones to make that make contact. Okay. I'm also going to go ahead and do the granules now. Again, sort of up to you how many granules you put on here, right? The more you put on, the more likely, I mean, the ch more challenging it is. So I'm gonna go with two, because I thought two was nice. Just here, there we go, put that granule on. This is why we have tweezers. And then a little bit more right there. There we go. Teeny weeny bit more on that one. You don't feel too secure on that. Okay. This is detailed work. It really is. This piece is tiny. Of course you could have made this bigger, but what fun is that? You could also go for really, really, really tiny granules too. Okay, so notice how I'm pushing this in to make sure that the pieces are making contact with, with the base plate, right? Or else it's not gonna solder. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pin this in place at this point. Just like so. OK. 
okay. I'm just touching these pieces because I know I've moved them around a little bit just to make sure that they are where I want them to be and where I want the solder to be. Because I know when I did this the first time, eh, not all the pieces really came together. I wasn't being too diligent about it. So we're going to be diligent today and do it like so. Okay. Okay. So I have two granules on there and you could do again four, you can do eight if you want to. Okay. One side is going to be the back side. So it sort of doesn't matter that you put something on the back side. All right. So now we're going to heat the whole entire thing gently and then we'll get all those joints to come together. If I were you, I would hold on to a soldering pick and make sure that nothing rolls away. Okay, here we go. Wish me luck. See, my granules already want to move. So I'm gonna move it back to where I want them to be. Make sure that back plate gets nice and hot because it has to attach to said back plate. Those little wires are so small, they don't necessarily need that much help to get hot. Okay, so keep your focus towards the middle there. Okay, there we go, that one's done. Notice how I'm still moving, moving. Probably would've been better if I put myself on a soldering station today instead of moving it by hand. So if you have a rotating soldering station, that's what I would do. There it goes, there it goes, okay. Phew, I think I did it. I'm gonna give it a second to think about it because it is copper. We'll move the pins out so I don't grab them by accident. Wish me luck. Nice quench on the side here. Let's check it. Oh, oh yes. Oh, there is a god. The soldering gods are upon me today. I'm going to throw this in the pickle. All right. Okay, your turn. You do it. See how it goes. All right. Then we're going to solder. I know I shouldn't speak too quickly, right? <laughs> Let's see how it goes once you solder on the, um, the bezel cup. Now, remember the bezel cup. The problem is when you're dealing with gallery wire, okay, the little tips, they like to melt. So try not to heat those tips too much because, you know, they're going to want to melt. All right, next up. Let's go check that pickle. Pickle's nice and hot today. Ooh, need another second there. Almost. So hope you guys are having a great Wednesday. It is hump day. What's going on this week? On Friday, we're doing a UFO Zoom. Uh, I'll post the link later today after the next zoom that I've got going on today, but I'll post the zoom. If you are, if you have any unfinished objects and want to join us at the bench, we're just hanging out and getting stuff done. If you have questions on projects, past projects that you haven't finished yet, get it, unfinished objects, just um, join us and you can ask questions there and I'll get you guys going. We're trying to get everybody catched up. I know you guys are all, I, I've heard it many times, slow it down. <laughs> you can't keep up. You don't have to do every project. It's fun that you do, but you don't have to. You know, we're only coming up on 100 projects in a few weeks. What's that? Anyway, so virtually ever crafting, um, the kits are being shipped out. I've heard from several instructors. They are shipping kits as we speak. We are also shipping kits here too. So be on the lookout for them in the next week. So we're excited about that. So I, Andy says there's a question from Gail that says any with a question mark and I, we don't know what that means. So okay, so there we are. 
the pieces on. So let's go ahead and solder that next piece on there. We're going to, so notice I already, since, um, since my, my bead ring is already on the bezel, I'm going to keep that up there. I'm just going to leave it there and I'm just going to add some solder on there. Okay. We're going to go ahead and I'm going to go to easy solder, believe it or not, just because I don't want to melt anything. And then I'm going to go to extra easy or copper solder on the inside because no one's going to ever see it. Ah, so the question, I, the question about any, yes, any projects that are not finished, I don't care whether they're mine or somebody else. So, you know, another project you learn somewhere else. I don't care if you have questions and I can help you do bring them. It's fun, right? If we can't help each other, who are we going to help? So I'm going to put solder into four spots on both the bezel and the ring because the ring needs to solder down also, right? So I'm going to put that in four spots. Again, you do not need to spread this like peanut butter. Okay. That should be plenty to make that happen. And I'm going to put it right there, just like so. I know that my little, um, my little ring is sticking up. So I'm going to push it down just a little bit here. There we go. All right, this time we're gonna play it smart. This time I'm gonna put it on my rotating <laughs> solder block and drop everything else out. Sorry, hold on, I knocked something over here. This is what happens when you have a tiny little workspace. Everything gets knocked over. Okay. So that was with easy solder. You can use medium, but I find it a little, oh, it's a little sketchy. Um, I want to prevent melting this whole thing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just solder on the back plate first before I solder up here. I want to get this really nice and hot, and then I'm going to come over and I'm going to solder the, um, I'm, I'm going to so solder the bezel cup. You know what? I'm changing my mind on this again. Hold on. I'm going to, I'm going to turn, I'm not going to do it on here. We're going to put this on the tripod. I'm going to do this from underneath. It's probably a better idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm going to do it from underneath instead because I want to really get that back plate hot and I don't want to melt my, um, my bezel cup. It's so easy to melt. <laughs> All right, so here, keep both ends of the dog bone, not just one. Remember, you are using silver, and despite the fact that I'm using copper, I want you to get used to this whole thing of heating everything first. And once it gets hot enough, bring it over and get that rolling. Let's see, there it goes. Ooh, nice, nice. Did you see that? It just spread through the whole thing. Very cool. Okay. And it was a really, really gentle heat. You don't have to go crazy with a lot of fire here. Nice quench. Let's check that. Oh yeah. All right, gonna throw it back into the pickle. Now we're gonna set this up again. This time we're gonna to go to the pumice, okay? You'll need that other piece of wire you have in there. I apologize, I know some of you reported that my little tags fell off, you don't know which one's which. The shorter one is the sterling silver, just FYI, okay? And that's what we're using, so we're gonna use the sterling silver piece here. So I'm gonna cut two pieces, I'm gonna just trim off that end because I want a really nice flush end on one side and I'm just going to cut, I don't know, not, not even a quarter inch because we're going to end up trimming it off anyway, right? So you want two flush ends. There we go. Let's go check the pickle again. Okay. 
not there yet. Okay, so what were we talking about? Virtually Ever Crafting. We're still taking re um, registration for Virtually Ever Crafting. Lots and lots of fun classes. If you don't know about the VEC shorts, they're one hour demos with a lot of information in a short amount of time. It's been really popular this year. There's our, this session. Um, I think we have like 15 shorts and we did do it all on one day so that you can hop from short to short to short. So it's it's been a lot of fun to see um, see what that's about. I mean, heck, Scott Mason even has a one hour short on uh, gold, how to solder gold fill. I thought that was going to be really interesting. So um, I'm sure you'll learn a lot. Most of us haven't jumped into gold fill. I have, I've dabbled into it, but can't wait to see what he has to say and see what we can pick up from Scott. Okay. Okay. Oops. Andy wanted me to let everyone know that we're starting to ship tomorrow and Friday. We had a few packages delayed on the way in, so that's been sort of the hold up. Okay, so here's my dog bone. I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to mark my, um, my dog bone here. So we haven't completely revealed it, but I'm going to reveal it now. Again, if you haven't figured it out, we're making a pitch bale. So now we need to make the part that goes inside of the stone when you pinch it to keep it, to hold it in place. It is up to you where you put these pegs, okay? So it's a matter of how far down you want, how far down you want your embellishment to be. So if you want to have it up here, you see the stone, then you would, Put your peg closer here. If you want this to go down a little bit further, then you would put your peg a little further up. Just remember, you have to leave enough space in between for the bend over so that you can slip a, um, a cord or a chain inside. Another thing too is if you do it too far up, far inside here, you won't have enough room for the stone. So I'm just going to eyeball this. So the question is, what pickle do I use? I use Sparex. That's my poison of choice. I don't, I don't like to use vinegar and salt because it's stinky and it doesn't last very long. And I find that it ha it's, has much greater environmental impact than my pickle. So that's my choice. Um, so here, as you can see, even on both sides. All right, and we're gonna solder one at a time. I'm going to use copper solder um, instead of extra easy solder. But if you have extra easy solder, you can use that too. Either way, it doesn't matter because this is on the inside. And notice my front is now facing down. And the reason for that is we're going to try to make sure that that stays in place without falling apart here as I solder these pieces. So to solder these pieces, we're going to freehand it with a pair of fire tweezers like so. And we're just gonna hold it straight up and down, right on there. Okay, that's a little too far from the edge. Can't reach it. Because I wanna be able to use um, the bowl as leverage instead of just free handing it off the bowl because my hands will probably shake. It'll make it a lot easier if you can put it on something stable as you're holding it in place for soldering. Okay, there we are, just like so. A little teeny bit of solder. I know this project is a little bit intimidating, but you know what? It's a really good skill builder, I promise. <laughs> I know, if I start itching, I know you're cursing me. I know, I know, I'm horrible. All right, so we're gonna go right in here. I'm gonna heat this first. Notice nice, gentle heat, not too crazy. Get it nice and hot. And it also is helpful for me to know that the Sharpie is starting to disappear before I put my peg down. Oops, and I turned it off by accident. Let's see if I can get that to happen. If you need to, use a third hand. Okay, there it is. First peg, done. Going to need to pickle this again. We'll do the next peg. 
All right, while that's doing that, I'm going to stick my liver sulfur in the microwave, get that warmed up nicely. I'll be right back. Okay. All right, clean enough. So I'm not going to get too crazy about cleaning it off because I just need this little spot here clean. But I will dry it up so that I don't have any um, heat sink. Okay, and I still have my mark over here so I know where I'm going. Oops, come to the edge again. Like so. Let's do the other part. So same thing on the other end, right? Whoa, that's a lot of solder. Okay, there we go. Can you see that? Just a little bit of solder. And we're gonna go on this end right there. Okay. Oof, nothing like the fresh smell of pickle in the morning. It's not morning anymore, I know. <laughs> All right, we're gonna heat that. Give it a nice amount of heat. Gentle, not too crazy. You don't want to melt anything. Put that down right there. Watch it solder. The question is, am I using copper solder? Yes, I am. And if I was doing this with silver, I would be using copper solder too because it's on the inside and it is such a soft solder. You just want this to happen really quickly. I don't want to melt the pegs and I don't want, want to open up any of those other joints. Considering I used hard solder on the other joints, they shouldn't come apart. Okay. So regardless of whether or not you're doing a copper base or a silver base, um, I would use something really soft on the inside. just as a precaution. Okay, there's my pegs and there's my piece. Everybody's still on and intact and I am like, praise the solder gods, gods today. Woohoo. Okay, so back in the pickle, let me grab the, oh, let's grab that liver sulfur out of the microwave. and move some stuff aside. All right, very close. I'm a happy camper. So what do you think? Not what you expected, huh? Okay, so I have my stone here. See what we've got. Out of the pickle we come. Yeah. All right. So here what you'll do is you'll use some steel wool or a brass brush to clean it up. So I've got my new toy. I love it, love it, love it. Is a scratch brush. <laughs> so I'm gonna pull out my brass scratch brush and I'm gonna clean this up. It's nice because it gets into these tight little spots and it gets everything really nice and cleaned up. We just added this to the website today. Um, it's in the description of the video. If you're looking for anything that, um, any tools that I have used today, we have it on the urbanbeater.com site and I tried to put a bunch of links up so you don't have to search too hard for them into the description and Andy does post it into the comments too, both on Twitch and Facebook. All right, so let's see, I'll just come out a little bit. So this is just liver of sulfur. Again, you can use black max if you want. So I just got a report from a friend of mine that, um, you know, I, I always say that's really hard to buy black max because of the hazardous shipping, but it looks like they've done away with hazardous shipping for the ground shipping. So it's not as costly as it used to be. So get yourself some Black Max. We would sell it to you, but we don't have a hazardous shipping license. 
about two thousand dollars yeah not going there and I'm sure there's some other regulations that come with it okay but I don't think I want to get into either so here we are Ta -da! don't really care about the inside although you can clean that up all you want I'm just gonna do it here what? okay Yes, you can. Okay, so the question is, can you use the fiberglass scratch brush? Yes, you can use that also. You know, I, I have it here too. And what I'm finding about that, it works really well. I mean, each one of the scratch brushes. So we're selling the nylon and the, the brass and I'm foregoing the, the fiberglass. Part of the reason why is it deteriorates really fast, right? So you're going to have to buy refills on that for sure. Much quicker than you will a like, three times as fast as you would a brass one or a nylon one. That said, I also noticed oh, every time I use it, I get little fiberglass bits in my skin and it just irritates the, the crud out of me. So that's sort of annoying. Um, so yeah, you do want to use it, the fiberglass, if you're using it, use it under some water. It's It'll prevent those little bits of fiberglass going all over your hands and into your skin. It's just really, really irritating. You know, who knew that something that tiny could irritate you so badly, right? You would think that it was the size of a piece of timber when it goes in. Ugh. Anyway, that's my story anyway. Okay, there we are. Cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. I'm digging these. I could do this all day. I'm not going to do this all day, but I could do this all day. <laughs> uh, okay. So now I'm going to set the stone. We're just going to put it right in there. So the question is, are the brass bristles replaceable in the brush? Yes, they are. And you know what? Stupid me, unbelievable. I used the wrong bezel cup. <laughs> unbelievable. It was supposed to be this one, because if you notice, <laughs> this one fits my stone. Uh huh. Whoa, I was wondering why that was so big when I put it on there. Okay unbelievable okay so this is a little too big i need to grab a different stone sorry honey can you believe that <laughs> okay so there's a different stone we'll just go with that i was wondering why this thing looks so big in here couldn't figure it out well you know <sighs> Okay, so with your brass brush, I'm sorry, with your curved burnisher, you're just simply going to push over the, um, the little crowns. And I'm working in opposites, always in cardinal points first. So north, south, east, west, top, bottom, left, right, right, left. And then we go to the other, the opposite corners diagonal corners and then you start bringing it in this way the stone will get set evenly instead of push too far to one side or the other and you're just going to keep doing this until all of those ends are snug and around the stone so that when you feel it you don't feel any points sticking up right okay and the reason why I'm doing it in my hands is because I have this peg down here and besides, we're just doing um, gallery wire, so it's pretty easy just to move it over. And I'm going to clean this up a little bit more even, because now that the pegs are, now that the little crowns are over, I can clean that and bring that up much nicer. If you want, you can put this on a polishing wheel and polish that up. There we go.
So I need to give credit where credit is due. It's hilarious. Several months ago, during one of our Zooms, one of the students said, hey, why don't you use a brass, brass scratch brush? And despite the fact that I've owned these for years, <laughs> I've never, never used them, never thought about them. I went, oh, you know, that's a really good idea. So ever since then, I started using them. Oops, there we are. Okay, so now we're going to trim the inside. Now, basically, it's half and half. You want to trim to the to the thickness to the thickness of your stone, right? Honestly, you can measure it. I'm just going to eyeball it because that's what I do. You can measure the thickness, divide it in half, and divide it divide it in half and um, divide it between the two of them. Okay. Just like so. so. You can see, maybe you can't see because it's black. I'll give it a quick cleanup on the back side here too. Just real quick. Not too crazy. So you can see like that. All right, so now we're gonna bend this in half. And again, you can use just about anything to bend it over. You want to make sure that you have enough space for your, um, you want to leave enough space for, for your cord. And here, I'm just sort of, I'm sort of looking at it to make sure that they're coming at each other. You see that? Like so. And I feel like that's going to be too much so we're going to trim that some more like so each stone is going to be a little bit different depending on how thick your stone is so the question is how long are the pegs i started at about a quarter inch just to give myself something to work with and again the pegs are going to be the thickness of your stone so it depends on how thick your stone is i i'm ending up at less than an eighth. I need to look at a I need to look at a ruler to actually tell you what that is. Okay, so I'm at about two millimeters each. Okay. Let's go out a little bit so you can see. Alright. So whichever side the front of your stone is, face it to the front. And push it out and bring it in. Look at that. See? It's not a bad fit. Could be a little, it, it could be like a hair, tiny little hair smaller, but there I am. All right, I'll show you the finished project. Hold on. So in review, I screwed up because I grabbed the wrong bezel cup and I have a much, this is an eight millimeter stone. Okay, yours was a little bit smaller and it should really look <laughs> a little bit like this one. So I also did copper on mine because, you know, I already had a nice one done, but this is about what it should look like. And I did four on this, four granules on this one. I did two granules on this one. So the question is, is there any way to work hard in it? You know, you are in essence work hardening it when you bend it, okay? So the action of bending it will work hard. It. If you really wanted to, you could put the mandrel back in here and gent and gently hammer on that. Not hammer, but use your your nylon or your rawhide mallet and hammer on that. But I don't really see the point of that because this thing is not coming out. And the action of taking them on and off will work hard in it over time anyway. So you know the. The point of pinch bales is you should be able to move it from one stone to the other, so it's like a swap up. You can do whatever you want, but um, it will work hard and on its own, okay? Through through that action. Anyway, so there it is. Woohoo! So happy, all done. So the question is, do you need to work hard in the pegs? No, you don't need to work hard in the pegs. They should be fine. I would not be using copper pegs though. That for sure. I feel like that's a little bit asking for. It's a little bit on the soft side because, you know, it's not like it's a total expense here to use just that little tiny bit of silver, right? 
it's not a huge expense. So I, if you were doing copper, I would probably do this with silver because copper is so thin. I'm sorry, copper is so soft, right? And it, but eh, in the end, I'm not completely clear that it's that awful. But again, why not? You probably have some of this wire scrap running around just to use for your pegs. Um, so hopefully, let's see what other questions you've got. The question is, so are both pegs through the stone? Yep, it's coming in, it's coming in like this. So the stone is suspended in between, okay? And that's how a pinch bale works. Most pinch bales, anyway. So. So the question is, is if you're interested in the bristle brushes, they are already online right now. Um, the link is in the description of the Facebook post. It should be the first one. Um, so there, it's already there if you want to um, make that purchase, okay? If not, um, Andy, I'm sure you can post that link here in a second for us, right? Oh, sorry. Andy, I, you know what? I listed it without telling Andy. But now he knows. <laughs> it's up and running and ready to go. Okay, so there we have it. Um, let's see. So I will see everybody... If you are a new student to Virtually Ever Crafting, we have that Zoom today for um, a Zoom training session if you want to join us. And then if not, we'll see you on Friday for the UFO Zoom. So bring your unfinished projects and we'll help you work through it and we can just all sort of play on Friday. I know it is not wine on Wednesday today. It's next week. I had several people thinking it's today. Today's the 31st. It's not the first Wednesday of the month. So why not Wednesday is next month? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it is next month, next week. And uh, Motley Monday, we're going to continue with that series on Monday of enamels. And we're up and running. So don't forget, register for Virtually Ever Crafting. And I will see you guys later. Oops, Andy said, hold on. Uh-oh. Okay, so the, the last question is, if you need to clean up the silver solder on the copper, how can that be done? The only way that can really be done is to take out a teeny weeny little bit of sandpaper and you go in there. You can see I have a little bit of solder there. You see that? That's not a granule. And sit there and sand it off. That's the best you're going to do. And it does take a lot of time and it's tedious, but it does work. You just have to sand it, basically grind it off. It's all, all you can do to move that solder off, okay? So hopefully if you were doing um, copper, you would have probably used copper solder and it will patina over time, so you won't see it anyway. anyway. All right, thanks for the questions. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the likes and the shares. And of course, all as always, thanks for the contributions. We'll see you on Friday, if not Monday. And I'm going to run to the next appointment. Bye.